Hey what's going on everyone, it's Surefire, and today we're going to cover the mythology of the Lion Pantheon. If you guys enjoy the video, please leave a like, and if you enjoy my content as a whole, then consider subscribing and following me on my social media. Shameless self-promotion aside, let's go ahead and get on with the video. The Mayan mythology was a Mesoamerican mythology that is tied to the religion of the Mayans, and consisted of tales involving the forces of nature, deities, and heroes. Being a Mesoamerican mythology, the origin of this mythology comes from the area of Mesoamerica, which consisted of southern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, and Honduras. The term Maya is itself a collective designation used to describe people who lived in the region that shared a part of a culture and linguistic heritage. While there are many important texts to the religion, the most important to the mythology is the Popolva, or the Book of the Dead which contains the Kishin creation stories, as well as some adventures of the hero twins, Hanafu and Shibalanke. Now looking into the mythology, we see important beings in not just the form of the gods, but also animals as well. Animals were regarded as members of a wider society to the Mayan, but they are also seen as very spiritual creatures. Animals that were important to them consisted of snakes, especially venomous ones, deer, monkeys, owls, and jaguars. Something to note is that in the mythology, there were also depictions of what were called animal people, animals that held certain characteristics of humans. These animals were often mammals, birds, and even insects. They usually played many different roles in society, ranging from musicians to writers and even healers, with a good example of this being the grandfather Great White Picari and the great-grandmother the Great White Coati, who will both appear in the Popol Va. Onto the gods, however, after looking at a variety of them, I've come to classify them under the following three categories, these being death, nature, and society. Death was a very important part of the Mayan culture, and this is represented in not only their culture as a whole, but even their gods, as there is more than enough to give them a list of their own. A common example many of us would probably think about is al Poch, the god of decay. It should be noted there was a, what amounts to a league of these death gods, each of who ruled a certain part of Shibalba, the Mayan underworld. They are known as the Lords of Shibalba. While each have their own domain over various forms of human suffering, the common themes still exist. I do want to cover these guys more in depth in their own video, however, as there's plenty of information to talk about them as a whole, if not individually. The next category that we can talk about is the nature gods. See, nature gods are those who have some sort of affinity with nature, whether that being with animals, the land, or even the weather itself. Gods who were included in this would be Amuzankab, who was the god of bees, Chalk, the god of storms and rains, or even Kabrakin, who was known as being a god of earthquakes and mountains. The last category to talk about though were society gods. Gods have some sort of direct or indirect influence in human society, or have some sort of rule over a human practice. Kukul Khan, for example, is seen as one of the most important gods in the entire pantheon, as he was known to have shaped the world as well as even create humans to begin with. While gods could overlap in each of these categories, I feel each god does at least fall under one of these three distinctions. Keep in mind, this is by no means any form of official categorical system for the gods, and it's just a way that I use to uh, categorize them for myself personally. This is completely subject to change as I learn more about the mythology and its deity. Looking into the cosmology, we have a pretty straightforward concept, as it was simply split into Earth, the sky, and the underworld. Since there really wasn't much information about the sky that I could find, I'll go ahead and talk about that first. The sky itself was divided into 13 layers, and each layer is often linked with a classical deity. That's about all I got. There is, however, plenty of more information on the Earth as well as in the underworld. So Earth is often described as one of two ways, either as a flat circular plane, or just a square that had four directions or solstice points. When described as a circle, it is said to be that of a turtle that floats along the water, while the square thankfully comes with a lot more information than just that. When described as a square, it is said to be a large maize field, with each of the directions it holds having its own tree, bird, deity, color, aspect, and mountain. Finally, we have the underworld, or Shibalba as it is more commonly referred to. As already stated, it was ruled over by the lords of Shibalba, and as such, this is known as the land of the dead. It is said to have been split into nine layers, but the Popolva makes no reference to this fact. Shibalba is, however, described as a court below the surface of the earth which consisted of individual structures and even houses of which acted as the first test into Shibalba. The last thing to mention is probably going to be the Tree of Life. This was a tree that existed in the center of the world and connected the sky and Shibalba to Earth. Now for a culture that was really influenced by death, there really wasn't a set concept for an afterlife, as it sometimes varied from even tribe to tribe. Their accounts include of a duo system where those who were good would go to a paradise, while evildoers went to the underworld to be tormented for their actions. 
Some funeral remains gave hint to some sort of a sea paradise, based on the aquatic imagery that was usually attached to the tomb. The last thing I wanted to cover was something that everyone is familiar with and knows the Mesoamericans for, and that was their concept of sacrificial rituals. Sacrifice in the Mayan culture was a religious act often done during festivals and rituals. While mostly using animals and always consisted of bloodletting from the members of society, there were instances of human sacrifice, but this was a practice that was not often seen. While the regular acts of sacrifice were often used as some sort of obligation to the gods, we can come to understand that human sacrifices was often used for something that would help with the passing of a new age, something to help with the crops grow, or even as a way to please any god that might have helped them win a certain victory over a battle of some sort. It should be noted that there really is no consensus as to why these sacrifices took place, and so this is usually mostly done by speculation based on any sort of trends that we find in, you know, archaeological research. Anyhow guys, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the video. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you guys have any sort of questions that you feel like maybe I didn't answer fully, go ahead and leave them in the comments below as well as maybe you feel like there was some information I missed, or you just want to go ahead and request something else for me to cover in the future, then go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. Don't forget to leave a like if you guys did enjoy my video, subscribe if you're new, and like I said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later guys!